Have you ever been confused that when you started lifting heavier, you stopped seeing gains? And that's because the heavier weight might have been sacrificing your gains without you even knowing it. So today I'm gonna to show you why lifting heavy isn't the only answer and how to unlock better results without risking injury. If we haven't met before, what's up, I'm Lockie, a final year sport and exercise science student at Oxford Brookes University. And after years of training and researching sports science, I've realized that chasing the max weights isn't the only or even best way to build muscle. Because generally when you start chasing the heavy weights, you start sacrificing other components that are much more important. So if you're frustrated by constantly plateauing or nagging injuries when you try for heavy weights, keep watching this video. I've got some eye-opening tips for you. So in this video, we're gonna break down why lifting heavier isn't always better, the consequences of focusing too much on weight, and some practical science-backed alternatives to maximize your gains. So let's break down why lifting heavier isn't always necessarily better. And we can do this by looking at a great example. So let's take one person, they do a five kilogram dumbbell curl, and they are implementing progressive overload to gradually increase the weight they're doing for that exercise. But then we have another person who goes to the gym and starts with 15 kilos on a dumbbell curl. And obviously this is way too heavy for him. His form's gone out the window and he's constantly getting injured. Who do you think is going to make the most gains? It's obviously the first person because they've started with a lighter weight that they can handle. They have progressively overloaded their muscles from a very lightweight to a very heavy weight whilst keeping form and not getting injured. But the second person's constantly getting injured, so they're losing precious time to make gains and their form isn't good on the weight they're using anyway. So this is a great example that shows you should start with lighter weights but then gradually increase the weight you're using with good form and implementing all the other protocols you normally would for an exercise. So now we've compared person A to person B and we've realized that a consequence of lifting heavy can be injury and a lack of progress. But let's do a proper deep dive into the main consequences of lifting too heavy for your body to control. So obviously it goes without saying that lifting heavy can slow down your progress because not only does it A, reduce your form, B, increase your risk of injuries, but a massive thing that people don't think about is that it shifts the focus away from the muscles you want to target because your form is bad. So if you're doing a bicep curl, but you're raising your elbow really high because you want to finish the rep, but then that's your front delt taking over, not your bicep. So that's another reason why you're not going to progress in the bicep curl because you're not actively isolating that muscle. And another major consequence of lifting too heavy is the fact that, yeah, you might get a bit of an ego boost for the first month and you may think it looks cool, but I promise you, in the long run, it is not worth it. If you're trying to push yourself way too hard and lift weights that you cannot control at all, you're gonna burn yourself out completely and you'll stop going to the gym. All right, so we've looked at a practical example and the consequences of lifting too heavy, but what is the actual approach you guys should take if it's not lifting heavy? So you might have figured this out from the practical example at the start of the video, but you want to be choosing a weight that actively challenges you and that isn't too easy, but also challenges you enough to grind for the last four or five reps, maybe even less, but with good form. And the most important thing in eliciting hypertrophy and allowing you to get gains and progress further onto the heavier weights is that involuntary reduction in tempo for your reps in the last five or so. And what I mean by this is your last five reps should be slowed down, but not because you want them to, but because they have to. So although you're pushing as hard as you can, you can't push them any faster than the previous reps. That is what will indicate hypertrophy because your mechanical tension and muscle fiber recruitment will be at its peak. But that doesn't mean that your other reps should be super fast. There's a general consensus from a study by Jeff Nippard that you should have your reps take no longer than eight seconds, but be no quicker than two seconds. But when you apply this to actual practice, your reps are looking to be like two to four seconds long. So applying these principles, when you first step in the gym, instead of going in the gym and picking the heaviest weights you can because you think it looks cool, will give you such more significant gains compared to the people that do go in and just pick super heavy weights that they can't control. So here's the main takeaway. Prioritizing rep tempo, control, 
and intelligently choosing weights that challenge you for your sets is a much smarter way to train than just sheer weights. You're gonna get much more consistent and sustainable gains and a heck of a lot fewer setbacks. So remember, heavier isn't always better. Focus on controlled reps, stay in that two to eight second rep tempo and progressively overload intelligently with good form because these changes can make a real difference to your gains immediately. So if you struggled with trying to reduce the weight or you're a seasoned pro at progressively overloading, let me know in the comments Give me your experiences because I love to hear them. If you like this video, make sure to check out my recent video on how to optimize your bulk this winter for maximum gains and come out of next winter looking like a beast. As always, if you like this video, smash the thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and turn on post notifications so you get a notification every time I post. That's all from me and as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.